Julie, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience once? Yes, of course. Um, so I'm Julie Wooten. Um, I'm the founder of Max Appeal. Max was my son. Um, started the charity after his death in 1999. My other charitable activities are that I'm chair of trustees for the Children's Heart Federation, national umbrella charity for children with congenital heart disease, because uh, Max had got quite a severe uh, complex heart defect. I'm treasurer <clears throat> for Cardiovascular Care Partnership UK, patient arm of the British Cardiovascular Society, and I'm on the finance committee for, for that as well. I'm a, a trustee for Genetic Alliance UK, again, an umbrella organisation for all people with genetic disorders. And I'm the secretariat for an all party parliamentary group to try to influence MPs and raise awareness for 22Q11 syndromes and uh, the secretariat for the international um, 22Q Society, which is for uh, professionals and researchers with an interest in that. And I'm also on the, the steering group for the European network, the 22Q network. That's that's great. You're like doing everything you can possibly. Could you could you please introduce what 22Q11 deletion syndrome is for all our listeners out there who are joining, like who are listening to it for the first time, who don't know about it? OK, so it's it's like a postcode for where the genes are missing on the on the 22nd chromosome. So the 22Q11, so the 22nd chromosome, the Q arm is the long genetics is very complicated, but there's there's two arms. If you think about little sausage links, so the top arm is P for petite and then the long arm is Q because Q follows P in the alphabet, so it's, it's, it's difficult. And 11.2 is then the number of bands underneath where up to about, well, it it, it depends, there's variable deletion. So there are missing genes on that region of the Q arm of the 22nd chromosome. The people who, who are detected with it, like what symptoms do they have? Uh, extremely variable and the you know it's 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 a s systemic uh, condition so every system every organ in the body is potentially affected there's close on 200 um, conditions associated with it so it just depends how lucky or unlucky you get um, really um, and it, it appears that the size of the deletion that can be 150 or 300 megabase pairs has bears no relation to the severity of, of it. The, the points of diagnosis are at birth with complex congenital heart defects. Um, yeah. Then starting school with palate problems and then occasionally with learning difficulties and and then sometimes with behavioural or mental health problems, but those are far more rare. So if 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 a child isn't diagnosed by the age of five, yeah. then the chances are they'll be missed. Oh. Because they don't have, you know, the um, the structural defects. So a poor immune system, a heart defect or whatever. So and then, I mean, the, the oldest person that we've had uh, diagnosed was in their 80s, and that was through ocular differences. OK. So like, but like, what are the major symptoms like which can be identified uh, for like then to go to go to, to go for testing after that? Like, what are the symptoms that can be seen or something? So you'd need the, the facial characteristics, the heart okay. defect, the immunity problems, um, the, the palate problems, so the speech 
and language mm. issues that go with it. And there's a, a very distinctive sort of palate problem that I means people are very short in nasal um, and then the be behavioural issues. So slightly on a, on a sort of autistic spectrum. So any two or three of those should prompt a genetic, you know, once once you've got them. I mean, those are those are the barn door symptoms. But out of the few hundred adults that we have, mm. they've only been diagnosed from um, family genetic testing after their children are diagnosed with more severe issues. Like how does how does Max Appeal provide support to them? It's it's complicated. So of course we've got the usual stuff. We've got the websites. Um, you know we provide information. Yeah. Um, we've worked very hard on getting some concrete information. So our cons national consensus document is heralded basically around the world has been quite sort of unique. The Americans are trying to sort of challenge us at the moment on that one to get to get in a little bit harder. Um, so getting a sort of a medical pathway for for families. So, you know, there's 20 odd chapters in there looking at the various aspects of it, sort of the psychology, the psychiatry, um, you know all all that sort of stuff and so, so that it will work within the nhs to allow people um a sort of a backbone a structure to to their treatment that's that's pivotal for us we also then run you know and certainly over the pandemic we've we've had loads of online support things so tea mornings coffee afternoons gaming sessions for the younger lads, yeah. um, you know, quiz nights for families. We've we've tried to sort of do what we can yeah. to 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 make sure that everybody's still hanging together. Yeah. Like uh, as as I checked your website, I saw that Maxipi holds like many events for the people affected with this syndrome. And like could you like tell us more about those events? Like what all do you do in those? And how, like, how is it impactful for the people suffering with it? Well, the aim of it is to get, is to keep the community together, so yeah. people can't get together. So I think in a couple of weeks, um, one of the trustees, Martin Kennedy, he's going to be running um, a, a beach event. So they're going to Scarborough Beach, and nice. everybody gets together and just as a bit of a picnic on the beach but they haven't been able to do it for a while so th and that's always been in incredibly popular he's had up to 40 families you know sort of invading scarborough beach and robin hood bay um we run 22q at the zoo that's my phone going i've got to get it in. so 22q at the zoo we've run that online this year um we just we tried to run it a little bit differently but I'm I'm not sure. So so we get it's called 22Q at the zoo. It's an international event um, to get all families together, getting them to wear a red T-shirt and you know with the logo on and all of that. And it, and it's it, it, that that has worked really really well in the past. Trying to build these sort of face-to-face -face contacts again is is proving quite difficult. People are. Uh, a little bit sort of reticent. I also wanted to ask like what are the major challenges faced by the families of the people who are affected with the syndrome? Major challenges are possibly to do with education, behaviour, psychology okay. and psychiatry. So mental health problems are um, well, almost universal anxiety issues um the average iq in the in the general population of course is is 100 um within the 22q population that's about 80. oh okay um and there's a, a thing about a sort of declining cognitive ability with age so as as people get older so people in their 40s 
um, are, are showing symptoms of Parkinson's disease, which is very early. Um, but that seems to be a lot more common in, in our population. Yeah. So like if I ask you about like what what support is needed uh, like by Max Appeal, like how can people help you? Things like you're doing. That yeah. it's a fantastic, yeah. you know, initiative that you're doing. It, it, it's to raise awareness and yeah. for the tolerance and acceptance, because we've got a lot of people that really aren't able to access employment um, because they they tire, they they get they suffer with fatigue and they can't communicate effectively with people you know just sort of commonsensical kind of things that um, the general population take for granted so to try and help those people achieve what they possibly can because they do have they do have abilities they do have yeah. talents but you know it's just getting underneath the the rest of it so what support for max appeal yes promoting it but everybody knows about the problems that people with, with down syndrome have or people with cystic fibrosis and possibly 22q is more prevalent than well definitely more than cystic fibrosis so it, it's it's getting that sort of awareness and acceptance and a tolerance to be able to integrate people so they're not sort of suppressed and lost like um... I can also say that like the targets for the foreseeable future is like spreading the awareness. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that is the next target like like that we aim like to spread the awareness as much as we can. Definitely. Yes. If if everybody in the country had ever heard of 22Q, yeah. that would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, true. And even GPs and medics and so forth, nobody's heard of it until they have to, which is good in one way, yeah. but but detrimental in in others. True, true. How do you think raising awareness about 22Q will make an impact of not only Max Appeal but to the community as a whole? Then, what are the other ways people can help Max Appeal? Raising awareness of 22Q, um, not just Max Peel, but the, the condition itself, I think will identify that it's um, allow people to realise that it's far more prevalent. So the current um, numbers are one in 2000 of the population. So that means that everybody will know or have known every school, every university, will have someone at least once or twice a year with the condition, but possibly the diagnosis rates are so low that those people do not receive the, the support and help that they need to achieve their, their full potential. And that is a significant deficiency um, in in the in the wider community people know about lots of other conditions but this one is possibly one of the most prevalent and and the, i think it's described as the most common condition that you've never heard of and how people can get involved well as you're doing raising the awareness um we're constantly looking for people with skills trustees um, to come on board, volunteers to run events, to to have an input into into our board and to to guide us and direct us because, you know, yes, we're a group of people and we might have an idea of, of what we're doing and what we want to achieve, but how to do it, you know, you, you constantly need to have fresh input into that. And, and, you know, people coming with new ideas is fantastic because we might have tried it 20 years ago, but now things have moved on and you don't want to be stale 
and you know resistant to change and all that sort of stuff so you know absolutely welcoming new new blood into the in into into the team thank you julie these were the questions that i had for you and thanks a lot for like cooperating with us it's a pleasure working with you actually <laughs>